Welcome back traders to Star Oasis Academy. My name is Ali Casey. In today's video, I will explain to you how to do rankings. So Strategy Quantex uh, has many, many variables that all can be used in ranking. And first I will explain uh, what are the rankings and their criteria. So to start with InBuilder, if you choose any strategy that uses the genetic evolution and by the way here let me make a recommendation if your strategy has a few uh, variables then you should use random the genetic evolution is used because when you have like hundreds of thousands of uh, probabilities uh, of iterations then you can use genetic evolution to filter through them quickly while the random generation will basically go through all iterations so if we pick genetic evolution and then we get this tab, this tab will be open. So you can see here, uh, you can filter in the genetic evolution. And so this is the number of trades and net profit. So basically uh, it's very simple, uh, number of trades, meaning you don't want any strategy that doesn't have a certain number of trades. So if you're doing something intraday, and let's say you have two years worth of uh, uh, data, uh, you can judge it. So, you know, if you're doing one trade per day, uh, so uh, you should have around 200, let's say 220 per year. So if your data is three years, then it should be around 750. So this 1000 is not fixed. You can play with this number to make sure that uh, uh, it matches your criteria. Same for net profit. So this is the filter that the strategy builder will go through it in the beginning and then it will go and do the ranking filters. But if you don't do genetic option, so if you uh, choose the random, so the genetic option tab will not be there and then all the strategies will be ranked based on these criteria. Now we come um, to the filtering condition. The automatic filters, these are basically a standard filters and they are all uh, very helpful. For example, no trades. So any strategy with no trades will, will be filtered out. Too many ambiguous trades, uh, these are for filtering outliers. So if you're building a trend following strategy, then you should switch this off because trend following strategies by design they have outliers uh, i should uh, keep this off if you want to build trend following otherwise just click it on too many open trades uh, again if you have uh, so let's go back here if we go to what to build uh, sorry the uh, trading options and here you can set the maximum trades per day so again if you're doing intraday strategies and you have three uh, trades open then that's okay but if, if you set this to, if you set it to one trade per day, then this should be on. You cannot have too many open trades open. And then no filled trades. Uh, that means trades that were open and didn't fill. So this should be on uh, all the time. So we'll keep these on for all strategies. Outlier trade, one exceptionally big trade. Again, this uh, goes same with the uh, trend following, with the ambiguous trades. And zero PL trades, uh, that means a strategy which was a scratch, which is okay, you know, things, these could happen easily, so keep this off. Zero dur duration trades, this usually depends, uh, it, it should happen like in high frequency trading. It shouldn't happen with our style of trading. Uh, by our, I mean, we are retail traders, semi-professionals. We're designing strategies based on minimum five minute bars. So then you should switch uh, this on. Uh, unfinished trades, same like uh, the uh, no fill trades. So I would keep this on. Too little trades, I would keep this off because I can define that in the number of uh, trades. So if I'm designing a, again, a trend following trade, uh, let's say intermediate. So, you know, it's going to take once uh, a trade once a month. Then, uh, so if it trades uh, once a month, 
then obviously there will be too little trades uh, or maybe momentum every three months. So this is, depends on the strategy. And then too many trades closing at the same bar. Again, if you're, let's say, building a strategy that trades, you know, two or three times a day and they all uh, uh, close their trades at the close of the session, then this shouldn't be uh, a problem. And then automatic check warning strategy when uh, not used for dismissal. So I will keep this on all the time. So these four, they should be on all the time regardless of your strategy. And this one, this one will give you a warning on the other ones. Once you finish this automatic filter, so when you go to builder, the strategy will start filtering here and then here. In custom filters, you can add as many filters as you want and there are a myriad of variables. Uh, before I explain this, uh, let me show you. So when you build, let's build some strategy. Let's pick a um, market trade station and the, the way these are built is using the data option. So currently there is no in sample, out of sample and validation. So this space now treated as in sample so anything you find here when it says in sample that refers to uh, uh, that refers to this part and if you build with out of sample so now you have this is in sample and this is out of sample one so if you go to ranking and whatever the variable is we're calculating based on in sample. If you go to out of sample, that's the total out of sample. So right now, the total out of sample is this. If I wanna, uh, when, when we pick more than one, so right now this is out of sample, one, two, three, four, and so forth, so forth. So you can also pick and choose those. So if you go to out of sample, you can pick one, two, three, four, uh, but what, what I want to show you is if you pick out of sample one and let me, let, let's say I'm calculating the uh, number of trades. So right now I'm filtering on out of sample one number of trades. This, this condition, it should be more than 50. So when I'm testing, then only this part, which is November 3 to uh, September 4th, only this one, if it has more than 50 trades, it will pass this condition. And of course, you can see uh, here, then you can do for out of sample two, three, four, and five. You can pick different variables. For example, I can say, let's say out of sample one, and then for out of sample two, even if it's number of trades, but I will have, let's say, uh, let's say 100 trades. And let's see. So uh, this is for... Uh, let's say out of sample uh, one. So for out of sample one is 50 trades, for out of sample two is, is 100 trades. And of course, uh, you can, because you can extend these. So I can extend uh, number two here. And you can do this manually or through uh, the calendar here. So right now, uh, the number of days in out of sample two is more than, is double the number of sample, uh, number of days in out of sample one. And that's why I want to do this. Now that you understand, this is the out of sample, the in sample, and full. Full meaning, so in this case, if, if it's full, that means, uh, sorry, that means all this uh, data series, which is from start date to end date, that's full. So anything, any condition applies to full, it will take uh, all the data period. Uh, and of course you can pick long and short so if you're doing if you're building a strategy that goes long and short i can pick the out of sample let's say out of sample one but only for long so this condition will apply only in out of sample one and long and you want the result in money percent or pips so now that we know that we can apply all these conditions to all or any part of the uh, data range. 
Now the conditions themselves, they can be either uh, the operator is greater than, smaller than, equal, greater than or equal, less than or equal, or no equal. So this is the operators. But you can change the number. So you see here where it says apply percentage. So if you go here now, right now, it's just a value, it's just a number. But you can also change it. Let's start with the number first. So you can see here where it's a number. If I come here and click percentage. So right now, what I'm asking. So right now, what I'm asking this condition is 60% of the number of trades in in sample should be greater than 50. And I can pick this number now. And let's say number of trades. And let me choose out of sample. So now what you what you're doing, you're comparing ratios. So I want 60% of number of trades in in sample greater than number of trades of out of sample. So let's say uh, you're doing a test and let's do a simple one. Let's do a 50, 50. So let's say you're doing this test. So you're building strategies based on this. And this, and, uh, and this condition, I'm asking that if the in sample trades, if the, if, if the trades that happens in this period is let's say 100, then the out of sample uh, trades should be more than 60 because I'm asking 60% to be more than the out of sample. So if my in sample is 100, 60% of 160 trades, and then the condition is the in sample trades should be 60%, uh, 60 trades, which that means the minimum out of sample trades should be uh, 60. This opens up uh, huge uh, opportunities because right now you can compare in sample to out of sample, uh, out of sample one to out of sample two, and you can put percentages. And also this, I can apply a percentage because the percentage is really good because you don't know the number. Like if you're building a strategy and you don't know if it's 100 or 200 trades going to be per per uh, uh, the trade the date range then the percentages is the best way to do it so i can here and go and say percentage and let's say 50 so now i'm asking that let's say let's put this at 80 so i'm asking now that the number of the number of sample uh, in uh, the number of trades in in sample period let's say 100 so 80% of that, that's 80. And the number of sample in uh, number of trades in out of sample is 100, let's say. So 50% of that, that's 50. So then 80 is greater than 50. That condition is correct. Then this strategy will not be filtered out. You can do this with, um, uh, again, any in sample, out of sample, and any variable. The number of variables, of course, it's huge. It's actually the whole library. Everything you can think of. And then each variable of those can be compared to six operators and can be a number or a percentage and can be measured against the full, the in sample or the out of sample, both or long or short. So you can see uh, it comes into hundreds of thousands, the number of iterations. But I want to teach you the concept so you know what to look for. So now we covered that the automatic filters and the uh, the how to treat the full sample, in sample, and out of sample. And uh, by the way, you have the in sample validation again. So this is like the out of sample. Let me go through it before we move to the next subject. So if you do uh, this, here you have in-sample validation. This is now in-sample, and of course you can have more than one. So if we go here, uh, you can see here in-sample one, validation one, two, three, four, and you can mix and match 
in sample validation one out of sample validation one so when you come here again this is the same thing you can compare like we compare the out of sample uh, all of them or uh, individually we can do the same for the in sample so this is for in sample in sample uh, test in sample validation in sample every validation every and then uh, from one to ten great you made it to the end of the video uh, the video as expected uh, is uh, too long so I split it in two parts so to continue please watch part two